Hello, Think Smart YouTube channel welcomes you and this is Mastandra Naidu. This channel is for all the high school students for all the major subjects like physical science, mathematics and English. Apart from these, we even deal essential topics for you. And this is first session out of three sessions of class 10 physical science chapter chemical equations. Here you go. I would heartily welcome to our YouTube channel Think Smart. Today, we are going to discuss class 10 physical science chapter chemical equations. It belongs to chemistry and this is session 1. The objectives of this session are listed here. First to understand what is a chemical equation. Next to know the differences between physical and chemical changes. Then to observe the different changes during the chemical reactions through activity 1, activity 2 and activity 3. First, we shall discuss what is a chemical equation. A chemical equation is a symbolic representation of a chemical change. That means, we use symbols of atoms, elements and compounds to denote the chemical change in the form of equation. Here, you can see on the screen a symbolic representation of a chemical change that takes place between hydrogen and oxygen to give water. That is, 2H2 plus O2 gives 2H2O. In the above definition lines of chemical equation, what is the last word? The last word is change. Yeah, we need to discuss very broadly about this word change. Change. We have discussed in the previous classes on different changes that occur around us and we have classified those into physical and chemical changes. You can see a neat tree diagram on the screen. Now, we will try to understand more about these physical and chemical changes. Differences between physical and chemical changes. Here we have mentioned four major differences along with the examples. Let us discuss now each one separately. The first difference, physical change is a temporary change whereas chemical change is a permanent change. That means, once one substance changed to another substance, if it was a physical change, we can get the original substance again. For example, freezing of water. Here, if water changes to ice on freezing, we can get back water from that ice. Therefore, this change is temporary. That's why physical changes are temporary changes. On the other hand, once one substance changed to another substance, if it was a chemical change, we can't get the original substances. For example, burning of coal. Here, if coal changes to ash on burning, we can't get back coal anymore from the ash. Therefore, this change is permanent. That's why chemical changes are permanent changes. Now, the second difference. You can see under physical change, it is reversible. That is, original substance can be recovered. Example, freezing of water. Just back we have discussed about this. On the other hand, you can see under chemical change, it is irreversible. That is, original substance cannot be recovered. Example, burning of coal. Now, the third difference. No new substance is formed during a physical change. Example, melting of wax. However, new substances are formed during a chemical change. Example, rusting of metals. Now, the fourth difference in our discussion. Physical change affects only physical properties, that is shape, size, etc. Example, melting of wax. But, chemical change affects both physical and chemical properties of the substances and its composition. Example, rusting of metals. These are the major differences between a physical change and a chemical change. Now, we shall discuss activity 1. Reaction of quicklime with water. Here you see material required. Quicklime of 1 gram, water of 10 ml and 1 beaker. Here we have mentioned key point also. Calcium oxide is known as quicklime and its chemical formula is CaO. Now we go to procedure. We have given here a stepwise procedure. Step 1. Take about 1 gram of quicklime in a hot glass beaker. You can see a hot glass beaker in the picture. We have to take 1 gram of quicklime in this beaker. Step 2. And add 10 ml of water to this beaker. Already beaker contains 1 gram of quicklime. 
Now we are adding 10 ml of water. A chemical reaction takes place. Step 3. Then touch the beaker with your fingers and observe the changes in it. How neatly we have arranged all the things here for you. What happens in the beaker? This is the chemical reaction that takes place in the beaker. Calcium oxide plus water gives us calcium hydroxide. CaO plus H2O gives us CaOH taken twice. The following observations can be made during this activity. The beaker becomes hot because the quicklime reacts with water and in that process heat energy is released. Quicklime dissolves in water and produces a colorless solution. The nature of the solution is basic as a red litmus paper turns blue when we dip it in this solution. Now we will go through activity 2 reaction between sodium sulphate and barium chloride. Here you go material required sodium sulphate of some quantity barium chloride of some quantity water 100 ml plus 100 ml and two beakers here you have to notice this key point it's very important chemical formula sodium sulphate na2so4 barium chloride bacl2 and we have mentioned here stepwise procedure step one Take about 100 ml of water in a beaker and dissolve a small quantity of sodium sulphate that is Na2SO4. Now sodium sulphate solution is ready. Step 2. Take about 100 ml of water in another beaker and dissolve a small quantity of barium chloride that is BaCl2. And now barium chloride solution is ready. Step 3. Now mix both the solutions prepared in the beakers. A chemical reaction takes place now. You can see pictures on the screen. What can be the reaction? Sodium sulphate and barium chloride gives us sodium chloride and barium sulphate. Na2SO4 plus BaCl2 gives us 2NaCl plus BaSO4. The following observations can be made during this activity. The sodium sulphate solution is colorless. The barium chloride solution is also colorless. We can observe a white color precipitate barium sulphate and sodium chloride are formed on mixing both the solutions. Now we shall discuss an important activity. Activity number 3. Reaction between zinc granules and dilute hydrochloric acid. Material required for this activity. Zinc granules few, dilute hydrochloric acid of 5 ml, conical flask 1 and a matchbox. Key point. Chemical formula zinc ZN hydrochloric acid HCl. Here we have given a stepwise procedure. Step 1. Take a few zinc granules in a conical flask. Step 2. Add about 5 ml of dilute hydrochloric acid to zinc granules in the flask. A chemical reaction takes place in the conical flask. Step 3. Touch the bottom of the conical flask with your fingers and keep a burning mastic near the mouth of the conical flask. You can observe the picture on the screen. What will be the products in the above chemical reaction? Zinc and hydrochloric acid give us zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. Zn plus 2 HCl give us ZnCl2 plus H2 gas. The following observations can be made during the activity. Zinc metal reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid and liberates hydrogen gas. When we keep a burning mastic near the mouth of the conical flask, it would be put off with a pop-up sound. As the gas liberated there is hydrogen. We can observe in the conical flask that the temperature gets increased and conical flask becomes hot. Overview of activities 1, 2, 3. During a chemical change we can observe the following points. The original substances lose their characteristic properties hence these may be products with different physical states and colors. Chemical changes may be exothermic or endothermic that is heat may be liberated or absorbed. They may form an insoluble substance known as precipitate. 
gas may be evolved it's time for review so far we have discussed about what is a chemical equation about the differences between physical and chemical changes along with examples about what type of changes that take place during chemical reactions through activities Thank you for watching session 1. Soon we would present session 2. Thank you.